Hey everyone, welcome to the college and career breakout session with Dr. Seth Jenny. We'll give everybody a couple of minutes to jump in. Hopefully everyone got some water, hydrated and did some stretching. And so <laughs> that's very important. Would you agree, Dr. Seth? <laughs> oh yeah. That was uh, our last research study. So now I'm going to go through <laughs> exactly, Focused exactly. On the uh, so effects of a walk break in the middle of long duration gaming session, the effects of a walk break. Exactly. So, all right. Thank you, everyone. As everyone's jumping in, again, we're going to leave a couple of minutes. If you're not currently speaking or if you're not asking a question, please double check yourself. Make sure that you're on mute. Um, we definitely want it to be interactive, uh, but we also want to make sure we're not talking over each other. So, um, you know, please just make sure that you're on mute. If, uh, you know, you've stepped away, I may mute you. Just, um, just FYI, so you may have to unmute yourself in order to ask questions. Also, feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, so as, as Dr. Seth is going through, um, you can definitely put those questions in the chat and we'll get to those um, after the presentation of the research. So again, thank you all so much for being here. And I think we've got we've got quite a few people in there. Seth, are you okay if we get started like here in yeah, a minute I'm, after I'm, I give your intro? It's your conference. I'm just here to uh, <laughs> talk a little bit. So however you want to do it. I, I started sharing my screen. Can can you see it okay? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So thank you so much. So everybody, I'm just going to go ahead and um, give a little bit of information about Dr. Seth. Um, Dr. Seth Jenny is an assistant professor in the Department of Exercise and Rehabilitative Sciences at Slippery Rock University. Um, he is a performance advisor to COVAC 2.0, the Meta FPS AIM trainer, if you're familiar with that. He's a founding member of the Esports Research Network. He's an editorial member of the International Journal of Esports and also serves as the faculty advisor to the esports team at SRU. And I think, Dr. Seth, you're going to be teaching some classes this fall too, right? Yeah, yeah, you can call me Seth. Um, yes, I'm teaching Introduction to Esports and a liberal studies class called University Seminar, um, which with it has an esports uh, lens to it. But it's more about um, how do you question uh, information that's presented in the media and how do you cr think critically, but we're going to do that through the lens of, of esports. So yeah, and then um, in the spring, I'm set to teach uh, current issues in esports health and society as well. And we're starting an esports minor at Slip Rock University in the fall. Fantastic. That's great news. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. And with that, I'm going to be quiet and go off camera and let you take over and present. Awesome. And you covered my next slide uh, for me here. Uh, and actually, there we go. So yeah, that's everything that uh, Danielle just said um, was going to be covered in this slide. Um, I've been doing um, video gaming and esports research uh, since about 2011. Uh, started with uh, motion-based exergaming gaming research and then uh, really looking at to what extent physical educators can utilize gaming in uh, their instruction. And then around 2016, I pivoted more toward uh, competitive video gaming research and esports when uh, colleges and universities started offering scholarships in that. Um, and uh, yeah, I've, I've done different studies focused on um, whether gaming motivates you to play a traditional version, the authentic version of a sport from playing the video game version of it, um, whether you can learn uh, cognitive as well as psychomotor skills from gaming, and most recently looked at the effects of, of taking a one minute walk break or um, uh, one of the first esports um, undergraduate programs in the U.S. with Shenandoah University, um, which some of you may have uh, be familiar with that. So, 
Um, that's really where um, the whole idea of getting a degree in esports started was around 2018. So some of you maybe have heard of Becker College, which is now interesting. I'm not sure exactly what all happened with them, but now it it is Clark University and their esports undergraduate program moved to Clark University in the UK. Uh, Staffordshire University started their esports program, and then in Finland. Um, Kajani University of Applied Sciences started their undergraduate esports degree program. However, did you know in 2004, Danube University in Krems in Austria had a Master of Science in Esports and Competitive Computer Gaming? Um, if some of you have looked at some of the research papers, I believe uh, Wagner, who wrote one of the seminal works on um, esports, uh, in 2006, his paper, you may have cited that before, that he was a professor there. Um, 2007, uh, there was a program, a two-year program focused on uh, casting as well as gaming uh, performance in South Korea. And then in 2016, so actually before Kajani, there was a technical uh, degree program in Almond Universe uh, College uh, on esports, and that was focused on becoming better at gaming. So... Here's some other areas where people may have seen um, criticism of esports degree programs in social media. So this first one is dated uh, May 23rd. October. And staff are university degree, and that got significant pushback by a lot of people on Twitter. Um, this one, uh, Decay, did you know that there was going to be the F word in this presentation, Danielle? Um, yeah, uh, the F it will. Uh, <laughs> I will battle until death against people who claim this BS, GTFO. I'll have Danielle explain what, what that means. Um, that was liked 1.2K times. It was retweeted 96 times. You know, that was at the time of I took the screenshot. Um, but I think uh, some people had a pretty strong opinion on whether a degree is necessary in esports. And then I'm sure a lot of you heard uh, and saw this a couple months ago. There was a new esports certificate out um, by the esports. Uh, Oh, what is the name of it? Um, this is their Twitter handle here. And part of my, this Zoom is covering up my slide here. But um, so for $400, you could get a degree, a certificate in esports. And when some people started taking the study guide quiz for this, they felt that what was being asked in the exam questions weren't was not relevant to esports, and it got a lot of pushback. And so this tweet is uh, by the Esports um, Certification Institute, uh, essentially pulling back and um, withdrawing their certificate and refunding people money. And the uh, really interesting thing to this was, is there were a, a fair number of well-known people in the esports industry that were endorsing this certificate. And I don't know to what extent they had, they were involved in creating and, and creating the certificate as well as creating the assessment for it. So uh, today, uh, what I want to do is sort of take about uh, 20 minutes or so and, and cover what is the general purpose of an esports degree, uh, talk about some of the programs that are offered around the world globally, uh, sh talk to you about what are the focus areas of these programs, and then also um, we have analyzed some course titles within these programs when that's available on their websites, the number of esports specific courses we analyzed as well. And then um, when I'm done covering that, I'll try to cover some future directions as well as answer questions. So this research, I definitely wanna give uh, big props out to Joey Gariziak from Shenandoah. Um, so he helped me. Uh, as well as Nico Besomes from University of Paris, um, who's uh, very much involved in esports in France um, with analyzing and collecting this data that I'm presenting today. 
And the other thing I guess should say is, is that this, all of this that I'm presenting is in a uh, manuscript, which is, has been accepted by the International Journal of Esports, and it should be published as soon as it is um, set up and, and copy edited. So the most of the people, uh, when you hear about an esports degree, they believe that you're getting a degree on how to play video games better. And that's not the focus of, of the majority of the programs, particularly in the US. Um, some of the ones overseas are focused on that, but there really aren't many of those uh, in North America. Um, but really what they are for is to prepare people to work within the industry specifically um, and specific sectors within the industry. So some of these degrees are focused and they're called a Master of Science or a Bachelor of Science in Esports Business or Esports Management or Esports Marketing. Or some of them have a focus on media and communication. Uh, some of them now, uh, this was lacking previously, but uh, University of Portsmouth in the UK just came out with a program focused on esports performance and coaching, which is an undergraduate degree. And really, um, the last talk uh, by Mr. Turner there, he mentioned how, how do you get buy-in? Well, really, these degrees, how you get buy-in is, is that you're teaching transferable, transferable skills relating to the esports that you're not going to pigeonhole that student to only work in the industry, but you can also use some of these marketing skills or communication skills and work outside the esports industry. But we are motivating and engaging these students through the lens of esports. However, they should be well equipped to, this is what the better programs should be doing. Um, they should be well equipped to teach within the industry. Um, however, there are a, a, a small number of programs that what we in our paper uh, have coined the term e-sportifying a curriculum. And what that, I'll give you an example. There's a, a master's, um, a master's cert certificate, a master's certificate in e-sports business. And the university has a master's degree in sport management. And so what they did is they took three sport management master's classes currently existing at their university. They added an intro to esports class and boom, there's their um, master's certificate in esports. And so when it seems like they are just taking existing curriculum and putting a very light twist of esports into it and then calling that entire program an esports program, uh, we, we are terming that e-sportifying a, a curriculum. So relating to what should be taught within these programs, again, uh, the better programs have a specific focus area on relating to e-sports. And this is a diagram that, that Nico created with a lot of input um, of experts in e-sports, but you can see the center of it is um, these focus career areas. I know, uh, Mr. Turner in the last presentation you the graphic of a certificate, then it tends to focus in one of those specific areas. Oh, can you all hear me? I just got a Yeah, there, uh, there might be some can audio you know, issue. Are we good? Yeah, yeah, you were breaking up for me, but I was kind of trying to monitor the chat and see if it was on my end or if it was um, everybody. Um, I haven't seen anything in chat, okay. but now I think you're pretty okay. I'm hearing you all right. Okay, uh, sorry about that, I apologize. So here are the number of programs. So when we say pro esports programs, uh, we are talking about bachelor's degree, associate's degree, or um, elsewhere they might call these diplomas. 
um, they're typically one to two year degree programs, um, master's degrees, certificates in all different types of certificates. Uh, there's professional uh, development certificates, undergrad certificates, uh, master's certificates, graduate certificates, and then uh, as well as undergraduate minors. And so we uh, through our data collection techniques, I'll, I'll go through in a second, um, we came across 95 programs. And you can see the how many there are. So 2004, we're at one, and then it goes all the way up to, um, it really starts to spike and increase in 2018. And now, um, you know, there's obviously more from, uh, from here. So what I'm going to go next to is this is what most people are interested in is where are these programs? And so here are the esports degree programs in Western Europe. Uh, the red uh, dots are the technical di diplomas, the typically the one to two year degrees, which in the US we'd call associates degrees. Uh, the, the blue are the graduate degree programs and the green are undergraduate degree programs. And in our manuscript, we list the university name, we list the actual degree name, uh, the number of esports specific courses, the website and, and all that good stuff. When you see various colors on the same uh, institution, then they have both of those types of programs. Also the lines in between uh, other locations mean that they have branch campuses. So those are the ones in Western Europe. Here are the uh, programs in Asia. And if you if you say, hey, you're missing one, I do have a slide um, for a few programs that we found since analyzing this data of 95. So we're actually, we found 14 more programs beyond the 95. Uh, here are the programs, in, the degree programs in the United States. And one thing creating this graphic, which is really interesting is, is that they're all in the Northeast. And I, I don't, you know, well, we have one in Vancouver, but beyond that, um, you know, it, it could be word of mouth. Um, I know, uh, speaking to my university, they, they were hesitant to jump on board because they wanted to see a big name university jump on board before they uh, dip their, their toes in. Uh, and a lot of people think that that Ohio State University has a um, esports program because when you Google it, you find a press release from 2018, but uh, that has not started yet. Uh, Ohio University has a um, program, but not Ohio State. And then here are the uh, certificate programs around the world. So the purple are one-year certificates. The green are um, undergraduate certificates. The blue are graduate certificates. And the red are other types of certificates. Um, typically, they'll call them professional development certificates. And so th those are more scattered. Uh, when we're talking about the mode of, of delivery, they tend to be online as compared to the other programs that I showed you tend to be face-to-face -face programs. And then here are the universities that offer undergraduate minors in esports. And uh, yes, Liprock's not on there yet. Um, the only one outside of the United States is one in Netherlands over here. Uh, Breda University, but the, again, they tend to be more toward the northeast side of it. Their southern uh, Oregon is is on there, which the arrow signifies that. So here are the um, programs that we found after analyzing the 95 programs. So SRU, uh, University of Miami has a global esports management certificate. University of Paris, that Nico is actually involved in this one, a one-year diploma. Butler University is starting an, an undergrad minor in esports communication, and then the Portsmouth one. And then we also came across nine, uh, they're more like what we'd call technical schools, vocational schools in Japan that is offering various focus areas of esports. And a fair number of those um, are focused on becoming a professional video game player. So, uh, we collected our data from 2018 to 2021 of March, and we use these uh, search terms. I know some of you might not really, 
want to hear this, but the other people are going to know how we collected this data. We also solicited uh, the um, two different Discord servers, Esports Research Network. I encourage you to Google them and, and get involved, um, as well as the Global Esports Studies Discord server. Uh, a lot of students and professors who teach those courses are on those servers. And um, we collected the name of it and location and the language taught of the uh, program, as well as the type of program, all those that information that I just uh, covered. And then we also tried to triangulate the data based upon media, news media articles, uh, websites, and then personal correspondence to verify information if we were unsure. Uh, from the universities. And then we did a comparative content analysis where we used Microsoft Excel, we categorized, um, coded the data into, into common themes, so qualitative analysis of the course titles. We did frequency counts and did descriptive statistics. And here is some of the results of that. And remember, this is based upon the 95 programs, not of those last, that last slide with those additional programs we found later. So there are, um, we found 35 bachelor's degrees, 11 masters, nine technical and 27 certificates, and then 13 undergraduate minors total from 74 different institutions. So a fair number of institutions have more than one program. And here is the focus areas of these programs. So the vast majority of them, it, you're, you're um, splitting hairs if you're trying to separate esports business and esports administration and esports management. And so um, all those business related focus areas we put into one category and there's the breakdown. 80% of those programs are focused on, on the business side of esports. Then about 16% focus on broadcasting, communication, media. Um, the one thing I should mention for some of you that are, are coming from a game design program, we didn't, they, you know, computer game uh, majors have been around since, since the 80s. Uh, uh, and so it had to have East Portland. We designed that were general esports, and then we had one program that had esports gambling as a focus area. All right. Y'all hearing me okay still? Yeah, you broke so up just then, a little bit, but uh, you're back. Sorry. So now um, we have the average number of esports specific courses. So we looked at the curriculum that was listed on the program's website, and we counted the number of courses that we believed had specific esports content being taught. And typically, they had esports in the course title. And when I say course, I mean for the people outside the US, modules. Um, and then they also they might have gaming in, in the title. So. Uh, the average bachelor's degree, we you know, we found that it had about seven specific esports courses within that entire program, and you can read the rest. This is across 77 different programs where we found the entire curriculum. Um, and so this is what you know, going back to the esportifying something, where you, if you got a bachelor's degree, and this is the range of esports specific courses, and you. Had two courses. Sports. I would definitely say that it's some more to find the, the curriculum you might be interested in. So, across 404 courses that I analyzed, um, there, the 88 of them were focused on esports business or management. Here's other course modules focused on introduction or history of esports media production, event management. A lot of those ones, the students hosted an esports event um, during the, the course, performance, video game design, internship. So you can read that on the way down. And so here, uh, yeah, 
to review. I know that was a bunch of information, but certainly, hopefully you'll take a look at, at the paper when it gets published. It'll be open access on the journal. Um, uh, <clears throat> future directions. I think that uh, there'll always be a dialogue of whether these programs are needed or not. Um, in my own personal opinion, uh, I think that a batch, if you're wanting to get into esports journalism, why not get an undergraduate degree in journalism and then maybe get a master's degree focused on esports journalism, um, for example? So uh, I, I question the, the total need for some of these programs. However, you might not get students to continue with their further edu higher education if that's not an option for them. Um, more academic research involved in esports. Uh, definitely larger, more well-known universities offering some of these programs. Esports textbooks are starting to to pop up, and that's going to continue to grow, a as well as um, esports industry and educational uh, institutions partnering, um, so that uh, we can provide more uh, holistic and informed educational programming out there. And then I think that those degree focus areas will continue to bend and move in the direction of where the industry goes. And, and so I, you know, pretty soon I think you'll see like a, a live streaming um, content creation. Some of those uh, more buzz current words we'll see in some of these um, newer programs out there, not just courses, but entire programs. So this is the APA citation of the paper. Um, you can Google that. Uh, if you're really interested in this area, I strongly recommend this article. Um, course correction, what lessons can be learned from Staffordshire University and the UK's first esports degree? It's almost like a case study that, that Dom Sacco did with a bunch of interviews about Staffordshire, uh, which is really interesting. It's a really long article, but I strongly recommend it. If you, you can uh, Google that. Um, and there's information about the about me and I will answer any questions, hopefully, or have Danielle answer them. That was fantastic. I'm actually super excited to see all of this information as well as read the paper when it comes out. And for everyone, I did put the link to the International Journal of Esports there in the chat. So that's when it's out, that's where it's going to be, right, Seth? Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So we have a few people who are off camera. Thank you so much for engaging. And But no worries if you want to be off camera, but maybe come on to audio or um, you know put something in the chat. Uh, but does anybody have any questions um, for Seth around the research, around what you're trying to do in your own uh, program? I saw someone. And if I have accidentally put you on mute and you can't come off mute, but you'd like to, let me know <laughs> in the chat. Um, one question that I had, Seth, is like, are there anything you mentioned that, you know, some of the programs maybe seemed to have perhaps just put in E or an esports on the front of some of their existing courses? Is there anything to watch out for, anything to look for, any indicators, um, you know, for people who are either trying to research this or maybe even thinking about getting a degree that they should like watch out for? Yeah, I mean, certainly uh, the professors of the um, of these courses are, they don't have a degree in esports because it, it didn't exist before. So one of the major things would be trying to do your own legwork to see whether they have um, any background experience, uh, because I think some administrators, um, you know, if you're familiar with higher ed, you know that um, <laughs> not all the best decisions are, are made all the time. And sometimes people get put into, uh, we want you to teach this class, we need it covered. And so sometimes they might be a um, hospitality management or sport management or even just a marketing or business and they have great experience in that area but to be able to provide those examples specific to esports in the course they may not be able to do that uh, so 
trying to research to see whether the faculty have experience either consulting in the industry or they're conducting research in, in the industry. Um, some of them have were competitive players previously as well in, in some of the programs too. And so that would be one of the major recommendations for a student looking to attend one of these programs. Okay. Fantastic. I thought you were going to ask me to name those universities. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not going to do that DM at all. DM me and I'll send you a, a private <laughs> message here. <laughs> Sounds good. No, that's that's really interesting. And I noticed as well, too, I mean, and I'm curious to get your thoughts on this, Seth. Uh, there, I didn't see, and maybe I just missed it, but I didn't see any PhD type programs or even yeah. like EDD type programs. Great question. Yeah. So the more I do talks and in, in research and publications in this area, I, I get reached, uh, emailed probably once every two weeks from a student. Uh, and a lot of most recently they're in the exercise science, exercise physiology, kinesiology field where the one, you know, hey, I'm really interested in getting a doctoral degree and doing research in esports are there any programs out there right now? And um, I, I sort of point them in the direction of some of the fa faculty that have doctoral programs that also just happen to do esports research, but there are no that I'm that I know of uh, doctoral programs focused on 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 esports specifically. Um, that definitely could happen in the future, but. Um, not right now. And that would be one of the things I'd recommend for those people is to look up academic research uh, and see where those people teach and to see what programs those universities offer and um, and then go from there. Siprock, we have a, a doctoral program in, in physical therapy. Um, it, yeah, so that's probably the closest. Absolutely. No. And that's, it's really interesting because that is some of the recommendation that I've also seen from others in the esports space, like um, Dr. Lemon from UCI. Like I actually saw her in the main room earlier. Um, I believe she wrote a blog post about that where, you know, especially if you're wanting to do that graduate level, like look for the people that are doing research, the current doctors that are out there doing actual academic research and um, look at their programs, see where they're teaching, see what their program is in, if that's a match for what your interest is. Um, I've also had, you know, like a there is, and I apologize that I'm forgetting the faculty member's name, but there is a doctor, um, I believe, in sociology or anthropo anthropology at Colorado State University who has an actual like living game lab where they do a lot of things in Warcraft and they look at the anthropology and, and kind of the sociology behind that. So mm -hmm. um, is that, would that, that's kind of what I'm hearing from you is, you know, when you're looking for that upper level degree, look for the faculty members. Yeah, and there's a few um, esports research labs that are popping up. Um, you know, not all they don't offer doctoral programs, but um, New York Institute of Technology, um, Harrisburg University has um, announced one. I don't know how much research is coming out of there yet, but they also announced a um, a new journal, the Annals of Esports Research. I think it's called. Um, there's a law research center. Um, I believe that one's in, in Germany. Um, and then University of Limerick in Ireland has a pretty strong esports research lab as well. Um, and so those are some of the areas. There we go. There's in the chat here, Ryerson University, Toronto is setting up a new research center. So yeah, it's always um, getting more and more information about these new programs and, and research centers coming up. And hopefully they're, they're partnering with the esports research network. Absolutely. No, those are fantastic. I want to give some space because I could ask, uh, I could ask you Seth, a, a bunch of questions, but I want to give space for everyone too. Um, does anybody want to come off audio or, you know, onto video um, to ask some questions or even just give their thoughts? I have a question for you, doctor. Great presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, at Minnesota, we're just kind of getting started in the esports space. And Monday, I just got buy-in from the president's office. And so as we look to head down the academic pathway are there any is there any advice or experience that you could share that yeah may help kind of fish out some of those hidden um 
like faculty, maybe who are advocates for esports or ch champions, because right now that's a limitation at Minnesota is none of them have the esports degrees, right? Um, but yeah. we kind of want to head down that path when I know they're out there. So I'm just wondering if there's anything you can share. Um, yeah, I I don't want to sound negative, but I would say from you know the various uh, universities I've, I've consulted for in my own university, prepare for um, turf battles because esports is so interdisciplinary and everybody's worried about whether their classes are going to fill and and whether their program is going to get um, shut down because they're not getting their enrollments. Um, Major program housed. Should it be in computers? Should it be in complete buy in with the faculty who have esports experience? It needs to be housed in the um, location of where the, the faculty who have esports experience are teaching. That would be the, uh, a major recommendation. Um, and Seth, then, sorry to you interrupt know, you. There's um, a lot of. What, what, Sorry, we just had a latency issue again. So I just wanted yeah. to see, like, Doug, would you like Seth to repeat Sorry. like the last two sentences he said? It, just the front part, please. I just missed that. Yeah, I would say prepare for a turf battle and that people will, will really question where the program should be housed. And I recommend it should be housed where the people who have esports experience, are, where their faculty lines reside. Um, and then, but even with that, it, let's say that I propose a new course and it's focused on esports event management. Um, then somebody who's in sport management or business management is going to be questioning why should I be the one teaching that class? And so the whole red tape of getting specific courses approved uh, is also delicate in the way that you phrase uh, course objectives and what's the, the, the title of the course and, and um, yeah, the experience of that person who's teaching the class is all in um, considerations for it. Um, but I would try to get talks early, but then make sure that the person who has the strongest voice is the one who aligns with what you want to do. <laughs> And what meaning like your provost, as long as who, whoever is, is doing the complaining, as long as they're lower on the ladder, it doesn't matter. So you need to make sure you align with the, the highest administrator that will push things through. Thank you. Thanks for the question. So we've got a couple more questions in chat, Seth, if you're okay with that. Yeah. So the first one is from Adam Lopez out there in California. Hey, Adam. Um, if you had to offer just three courses for a well-rounded esports certificate, what would the name of those three courses be? Um, it is well-rounded. Does that mean a general esports? Or I mean, I honestly, I would I would focus it in one of those specific areas. Um, so if if it's esports management, um, what you'll typically see is um, a, a management class, you'll see an ev event management class, um, and then you might have an intro to esports class. Um, yeah, it, it depends on what's the focus area of it, but that would be my biggest recommendation is to, is to focus the certificate in a certain sector within esports, not just general esports. And just to add on to that, Seth, because it's something that I've heard in some of my discussions too, would you recommend that schools kind of look for what's their niche? Like, are they really, really good at business management or are they really better at the technical side or things like that? And then kind of focus there? Yeah, certainly. You look at the institutional mission and making sure that whatever it is you're doing aligns with that, as well as what resources you have um, and uh, whether it be on campus or off campus resources too, for sure. And then faculty resources, who do you have people with expertise? Um, is this gonna be face-to-face? -face? If it's not, if it's online, then you can definitely potentially have um, adjuncts who are currently working in the industry um, teach classes, but then you certainly run into the risk of, of them maybe not being very good instructors. 
um, not being responsive to student questions, concerns, emails. Um, it, it, it depends on that uh, as well. Yeah, that, uh, that's also a good point. Um, Absolutely. Thank you. So, and kind of playing on that, and Adam, let me know if that was, if that covered everything in the chat, um, but Carol kind of added on to that, are esports minors the answer for higher ed? Um, I think at the undergraduate level, I think they are. I think that it, it, it definitely is a good solution. Um, I think that there's definitely room for uh, master's degrees focused on esports. Um, you know, you, you might get an undergrad in sport management and then you get a master's in esports and it, because you've learned the business fundamentals and now we're learning it specifically through the lens of esports at, at the graduate level. Um, I think one of the big issues that you have right now is, is that we don't know what's the job placement rate of these esports degree programs right now. So how successful are they? Because right now they're starting to be in their third, uh, third and fourth years. So how many of these students who went through these programs are getting jobs, number one, and then how many of those jobs are within the esports industry, number two. And um, that's where a lot of uh, my current university was hesitant to, to jump in um, because they wanted to see data before they made major decisions. Um, but Shenandoah was like the opposite. It was, they were like, they literally used the term, let's throw, uh, throw it against the wall and see what sticks is what, and so they, they're the ones that are more of on the innovative side, um, but it's also on the high risk side of, um, you know, that, but Shenandoah started with three tracks. They started with a sport management track, a, a sports science track, and then a communications track. And um, the sports science track never took off um, for a couple different reasons. And so now they're moving away from that. Um, mainly it, didn't take off because I didn't teach for them, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Plug. Um, like it. I like it. So um, then we have, it looks like maybe one final question in the chat. Um, what, and that's from Brandon, what are some fields that may come in handy later on as the esports industry develops? So that's your crystal ball question right there. Mm. Man. Yeah, Kurt Melchel, I think, could answer that question better than me. Um, <laughs> I see, I see his name on there. Uh, yeah, so um, really, I, I mentioned I think content creation and live streaming are areas that are going to take off. Um, I think that some of the performance side of esports, because it's difficult to have a class when you're, it's like there's not a lot of research to support what you're stating. And so there's a lot of business fundamentals that we can teach people, but when it comes to what is the best way to provide physical training and to support um, the health of esports players is a little bit more in the art area than it is in the science area right now. And so as we do more research and find more answers, then uh, I think those uh, those types of courses and modules and programs will start to develop some of the esports medicine um, side of things, uh, wh which is one of my major research um, interest areas. Are uh, yeah, so uh, I don't think that we're gonna take off and and have a bunch of prof how to be a pro gamer type of thing in higher ed. I think that private industry and in some of those. Um, private organizations might spearhead some of that but good luck in having your parents pay 30k a year to go be a pro gamer when it's likely you're not going to become a pro gamer um yeah and that and that's what the discussions that that you have to have with those parents who are majoring in these programs is what are they being taught uh, beyond uh, getting better at video gaming, which the majority of the programs aren't focused on that. And, and what are the job prospects for, for these programs? Absolutely. I mean, going back to Nico's diagram that you showed there, just there are lots of other opportunities, but you need to build those other skills in too. Mm -hmm. For sure. 
Absolutely. So, okay. Does anybody else have any, that's the last of the questions in chat. Um, is there else, excuse me, is there anything that anyone else would like to ask, comment about? Um, I know Seth called Kurt out there being in the room. <laughs> Yeah, I had a, a question for you as um, uh, someone in a K to 12 school looking to, to start an esports program, what insights would you give from what you know, what you've researched and learned about, um, you know, these programs at the, the post-secondary level, what would you advise um, right, off, right off the bat as we get up and running uh, that K to 12 schools look at when we're implementing our, um, you know, possibly extracurricular esports programs? Yeah, I mean, you know, a big piece to to learning is is motivation and engaging students, and so that's what esports is doing right now. It's it's incre you know it's increasing um, attendance because they're wanting to come to school and and uh, going to to esports club or or the esports team or whatnot. And so um, I would I would say as far as these higher ed programs. Um, this could certainly be a channel to motivate students to want to um, potentially major in esports. But then uh, you also have um, the whole other facet of esports when it comes to um, teaching these students other skills than becoming better at the game. So, can you? put students in a position where they are they are actually casting the games can you put students in the position where they're marketing tournaments can you put students in the position where they're coaching their peers to become better and so uh I, that's what i would say would be um looking at all of the different career paths within esports in that major diagram I, I, I showed you, and then helping the students and nurturing and facilitating them to acquiring some of those different skills to see is, is that a viable option for them in really, is it a major interest area that they get into game design, that they might get into um, uh, marketing or, or communication or, or business. And then um, hopefully the esports side of it is motivating them to want to learn more about it. But you're teaching a lot of those other transferable skills through that lens of esports. Uh, and then, yeah, if some of these programs are located geographically near you, I would definitely reach out to them as well to try to, um, I mean, they, they're going to, they're, they're going to be interested in you just to have a pipeline for recruitment. Um, but also uh, it's reciprocal where you might have um, them come down and do some programming with you and, and you might attend some of their tournaments that they might be hosting. So yeah, I would, I would definitely reach out to those programs as well and to see. Um, the other thing is the, a lot of these programs have internships, practicum. So potentially you might get a, a student at one of these institutions that needs to have an internship and maybe they might come down to your school to um, to coach for a season because it's credit they need to they need to get three credits from their program if if it's a coaching or whatever aspect of esports their degree program is focused on you might be able to to be a um, a practicum site for for them too that's a really interesting idea thanks very much appreciate the input yeah sure all right. Well, I think it is that time, although like this has been fascinating and I'm sure we could go longer. Uh, we wanted to, again, give everybody time for a break, stretch, get some water, um, watch the nifty Intel gaming commercials that we're going to put up in the main room. Um, but just as a quick reminder, the link back to the main room, I just put that in the chat. But thank you so much, Seth, for sharing your research. That was incredibly informational and eye-opening, and I can't wait to actually see the paper on the International Journal of Esports site. So is there anything else you wanted to wrap up with? No. Um, in the appendix of the paper, we list every single program and the website to every uh, program as well. So um, that will be definitely a lot of further information for all of you. And, and like we said, out of the 95 programs, 70 77 of them list the curriculum too. So, you know, if you're at, you ask questions about which courses would you offer? Well, I mean, you can Google um, those different programs that I, I presented already and you can see uh, Shenandoah's and 
Becker colleges and, and um, well, Clark University now and some of those other ones to see what are the course titles and, and um, most of them do list uh, their courses, but not all of them list course descriptions. Um, it takes a bit of digging for that. Good information. Thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you, Seth. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you back in the main room. Thanks, everybody.